What does the idiom close but no cigar mean? What is its connection to a fair? How do you use the idiom in a sentence? What's the difference between infer and imply? All this and more coming up, but first do subscribe to The English Nut on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks. Have you been to a fair or carnival where you can win a prize by throwing a ring around a bottle or shooting a balloon? These days the prize is likely to be a stuffed toy. But in the early 20th century in the US, the prize was often a cigar. If you came close to winning a prize but didn't, possibly because these games were rigged, the person manning the stall would say, close but no cigar. While there is no incontrovertible evidence to prove it, this is most probably the origin of the phrase. A cigar is essentially a rolled bundle of dried fermented tobacco leaves meant for smoking. The word cigar came into English in the early 18th century from the French word cigar or the Spanish word cigarro, which traces its roots back to the Mayan word cigar, which means smoking. I hasten to point out that in those days, it wasn't children who were trying to win the prizes. It was adults trying their luck and there was little awareness about smoking being harmful to health. In fact, smoking was very much in vogue and cigars were considered a premium smoke, which they still are among a certain section of smokers. But our interest is not so much in the actual cigar as in the idiomatic use of the word as a part of a phrase, close but no cigar, is used to indicate that you came close to achieving success but didn't quite make it and therefore do not get any reward. A near miss is, after all, still a miss. It is interesting that long after the tradition of giving cigars as prizes at fairs and carnivals has faded, we continue to use the phrase. Incidentally, cigars also used to be passed out by the proud father to relatives and friends to celebrate the birth of a baby. This tradition still exists in the US but is less popular today than in yesteryears. Close but no cigar started being used as an idiom in America in the late 20s or early 30s. In 1929, the phrase appeared as the headline of an article in the Long Island Daily Press. Close but no cigar was about a man who came second in the presidential race of a community association. In 1930, the Cleveland, Ohio plain dealer described a bowling match thus. Peters toppled the Maples for 120, 100 and 100. Scott was right behind him with 113, 115 and 117. Close but no cigar. And in 1935, in the film version of Annie Oakley, we find the sentence, close colonel, but no cigar. The phrase grew in popularity through the 1930s and 40s and can be found in many newspaper articles from that era. Nice try, but no cigar is a variant of the idiom. Here are some examples of the usage of the phrase. It was close, but no cigar for Gaurav as he came second in the annual school exams. He caught the ball, but it slipped out of his hand. It was close, but no cigar. She got the answer to the tiebreaker question at the quiz only partially right. Nice try, but no cigar. Close But No Cigar is the title of a song by quirky American singer Weird Al Yankovic. Its lyrics include the lines, And I told her, I said, Hey, are we playing horseshoes, honey? No, I don't think we are. You're close, close but no cigar. The singer is talking about a girl called Jillian, who the lyrics tell us earlier in the song, uses the word infer when she means imply. And just because of this linguistic misdemeanor, she is almost but not quite the right girl for him. Close, but no cigar. Quite a grammar Nazi, this weird Al. Horseshoes is a lawn game. Players throw horseshoes at stakes in the ground. Ideally, the horseshoes need to land in such a way that they encircle the stake. So what is the difference between infer and imply? Well, they're opposites really. Imply means to hint at something, whereas infer means to decode the hint. Imply means to convey something without spelling it out. Infer means to understand or form an idea about something when it is not being spelt out. 
Imply means to say something indirectly and infer is to understand what is being said indirectly. Of course, you may decode things incorrectly and infer something that was not implied. The following sentences will help clarify their meanings. His words were neutral, but his tone of voice implied a threat. Though his words were neutral, she inferred from his tone of voice that he was threatening her. I'm sorry, I did not mean to imply that you were lying. There is so little evidence, it is difficult to infer anything. He tried to imply that he was the better candidate because he studied at a more prestigious college. She inferred from his manners that he had been brought up well. How would you use the idiom close but no cigar? If you can think of an example, please write it in the comment section. Also do write how you would use the words imply and infer in a sentence. I'm the Englishnut. Bye for now.